Right, well, from this thing here, still waiting. The mail should be here today at some point, so we should get some goodies for this. But I've also got another box of tricks that we could use to, how would you say, salvage some parts. And we've got one of these. Oh, bits are flying everywhere. One of these, it's a sprocket with a rag joint for attaching to the back wheel. I have the whole kit in here for actually turning as a clutch cable. Another throttle and carb set. Little kit in here, loads of bits that we can pinch. Hold that off. Move the box so we've got more space for seal. Now we've got a fuel tank, although I've ordered another fuel tank. This one here can attach to the frame of a bike. It's got the on off cap and some fuel line. We have got probably a size 21 chain. Good, good quality, well, good, good quality, but good tough chain, good starting point, it'll fit our sprockets, it should, it's a gearbox here, it's not going to fit this one, but, yeah, the other one, the 10 tooth sprocket that will eventually go on it, it will fit. Uh, we have a coil and HT lead set up. If need be, we've got an entire engine that's got a possibility of five or six volts as well, so full engine there, it's a 66cc, they sell it as a, I think an 88cc, but yeah, they're telling porkies. There we've got some fitting kit, we've got... All sorts of bits and pieces. I've saved all the brakes and loads of mountain bike brakes and gear levers and stuff. All aside for when it took place. Another spark plug. Chain tensioner. That could be handy in the project. A bolt on chain guard. Sweet! do for protection in case it goes haywire and comes off and I just found a spark plug key that would have fit on the other engine excellent keep that out we also have an exhaust oh yeah sweet so we've got plenty of parts Exhaust hanger, we got even a bike stand because the engine would be heavy pulling to one side, so you got a stand. Loads of stuff. Not only that, but we've got diagrams of stuff. It's all extra goodies. As you can see, that's the kit. And that's the way it would look on a bike. Only I'm going to make something that's like this. The engine mounted on the side of it, running a chain down to the opposite side. So we've got all the goodies, we've got throttles, we've got all sorts of stuff. Fuel tanks, we've got extra fuel lines, throttles, we've got everything we need. We've pretty much got everything we need to build two of these suckers. This one's good, this one's cool. This one fits inside the frame of a bike. It's got two U-bend bits here that sit inside the V of your mountain bike. It sits right down in there. Cool stuff in the frame. My frame's not like that in that one. But yeah, the one with the middle triangle, it sits in there perfectly. These things can bolt up on a bike in about 
two and a half hours you can be fully fully built ready to run but like I said my frame's not like that I've got a, the bar down the middle and bits coming off of it usually you'd have a top bar and a sloped bar coming down with a big empty space so yeah let's see what bits we can pinch what we can do well, these bikes they're all over YouTube these things this whole kit this whole kit cost me I think it was like 66 pound or 68 pound about a year ago I'd fully built this up on a bike and didn't want to run it because I had nowhere to store it at the time but now we're here I don't even mind trying to make a dual engine mountain bike yeah not seen one of them yet so yeah we might go for dual engine just depends if we can find a way to mount this over the front of the bike that'd be kind of cool but I just think with the different power to weight ratios and different sprocket ratios I don't know if it would quite work but I might see if I can find a way of mounting making a dual mount on the other part so that the first engine can go on the side just have an extra bit on top where I could have that we could turn the other engine into just a purely friction drive and this will be the chain drive but yeah we'll see it's cool stuff so we've got plenty of bits for parts plenty 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 still got some stuff in here lots of extra levers mountain clamps yeah this could go help a lot because it gives you the ins and outs of everything that's in the kit all the parts that you have you can even see the different well so it's a different style of bike oh look at that wow do you guys see what I see? Look at that picture. He's got it mounted on the front. Mmm. Might have to do some copy copy. Cool stuff. Somehow I don't think that's the same engine, but if it is, that would be cool. Probably just another fitment for the side of the crank. It shows you how to set up the rag, the rag joint for the back on your spokes. Now there is another one called the clamshell adapter. And that actually grabs on the inside your wheel on the hub. Clamps around the hub. It's a much better design. These things here, if you try and pull away from a standstill, chances are you're going to rip some spokes out eventually. So... You'd be better off getting the bike going. Get it pedaling a bit. You need to anyway to bump start it, but if you're going too slow, you're better off pedaling. That'll make your back wheel last a lot longer. Yeah, this is all the parts the engine, the throttle, and clutch cable. Get your automatic release clutch lever, your exhaust throttle and handle, chain guard, fuel line, spark plug, spark plug key, fuel valve for the fuel tank, the rag joint, the sprocket, the coil, your carb, your throttle base, the chain. Yeah, there's not much to it. And they go quite good. <laughs> I've seen a few of them doing really well. A lot of guys upgrade them as well, but uh, it looks like a fun toy. I don't mind building it. I certainly don't mind having a blast on it. We just want to go stealth mode. Now you try going stealth mode with a chainsaw engine. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, electric's definitely the way to go, people. Definitely. You can pack a load of power in it. It's barely hard and you can get where you need to go without being seen or heard. Have a bit of fun. 
I can see why people complain about dirt bikes. You can hear them from miles away at full throttle. And yeah, they are annoying. A bit like what this little hair dryer is going to be like, but it's going to be a funky contraption. Well, that's the engine we're going to use. Should be fun. Unless I can find a way of mounting this. I might just go and cut a chunk of bike frame off another bike and just mount it to that and find a way of mounting that chunk that it's attached to onto the bit on the back of my bike that will be coming out of here. So I might end up making two different mounts for two different engines. But it should be funky. It's cool stuff. I'll go for just now. And wait to see if the post has been. Right, well, we've run into some hiccups. And for a start, the fuel can never came. The petrol tank. So, got it. Put a bit of delay on things. I'm just popping this one off. The throttle cable came. It's all bunched up just now. Yeah, the petrol can would have been good to come. I'm dying to get this thing started before it gets any more moisture in the air. I'll try to set up the carb. The carb's not been set up yet, it's brand new, so I'm to get it active before it gets too cold. <clears throat> right. Now this one has a bit more meat with the gravy, so we should get what we're looking for. I'll bring you over. Where are we? Driver. I'm pop it through here first. Pop it into there. That's that. Then we tighten it from the other end. And then once that goes in there, that gives us a little bit more to play with on this end. Now the idea is we're going to use this throttle. Since it's got two wires we can use it as a kill switch. I need to find the other part. There's a little disc that goes inside in the middle. I'll go look for that. Right, so now we've figured it out. So we filed down this part, well we actually done it on the flat file and then used the triangle file just to go down into the groove to open it up because it was trapping the wire. So now we just slot that down inside, bring that in there. Now we'll be able to back this off a bit. Oh, we're getting movement. Don't want movement. In fact, I don't believe I do want to wind it back. It's perfect, so there we go. Don't know if you can bring you over so you can see it. Now, when I squeeze the brake, you'll see the throttle down here activate. It's as easy as that. So now we've got one set up throttle without using a throttle, which is an added bonus because now we've got a spare throttle, but an added bit of confusion because if you pull the wrong brake, <laughs> but yeah, now nah, it should be fine. It's just a shame the petrol tank never arrived, but we are set up for action, kind of. Gonna have to wire a kill switch to it. So we'll need to do that at some point as well. That's why I wanted the throttle on it, because then I could have just wired them and connected them together. But yeah, that's it for me just now. I need to wait for the petrol tank.